Mate, it is time. It's finally time. Ever since I started this series, I've been waiting for one particular episode, my favorite episode of all time. I've been waiting to cover it patiently in WTF moments, longing for the day that I finally get to do it. And here we are with my favorite episode ever. And I'm going to rip it to pieces. <laughs> We start the episode with a direct quote from the announcer. Now Gary and Melissa are down to just one Pokemon each. Whoever wins this battle wins the match. Well, actually Liam, I think you'll find everything the announcer just said was correct. So how can this be a WTF moment? It's a WTF moment because usually he gets it wrong. So it's surprising to hear him actually understand what stage we're at in this battle. Gary Gary starts off by telling his Nidoking to use Horn Attack, a move that will be not very effective against the rock type golem it's facing. Mate, you can tell you're Ash Ketchum's rival, you battle as poorly as he does. Melissa orders her golem to use Seismic Toss, which fair enough is guaranteed damage, but still, you're a ground type against a poison type. Use a ground type move. I swear, the right is right Pokemon battles as if there are absolute no stakes and that nobody gives a toss whether they win or lose. Gary Gary is officially out of the Pokemon League and he didn't even make it to the top 32. That in itself is a WTF moment if ever there was one. That means we don't get to see Ash versus Gary inside a stadium yet. And it means Gary Gary's talked all this smack for so long and then choked when he got to the league. I'm not angry, Mr. Gary. I'm just really disappointed. Honestly, Gary, if I were you at this point, I'd just quit being a Pokemon trainer and become like a Pokemon re researcher or something. Also, he didn't even stick around to watch the rest of the tournament. That's just disrespectful. Like, there's not going to be another tournament for another year yet, so it's not like you really have anywhere you need to be, is it? What, did you have plans for this weekend, just on the off chance that you lost? Or does he have to earn all his gym badges again? Is that why he's off, to try and get a head start, maybe? I've never thought about that, really. Do you actually need eight badges per league? Like, every time you enter the league, do you need eight fresh badges? Or can you theoretically just come back next year with the same badges? I mean, in the games, you never had to re-earn them so I suppose that is the case that once you've got your eight gym badges for that region you've got them forever and can just keep re-entering the league. So in that case with several generations year after year earning their eight gym badges and entering the league and then coming back next year with the same badges you'd think the league would have been busier wouldn't you? I feel like that was a tangent that feel like a tangent to you? Look, I don't want to be that guy, which means that I'm absolutely about to be that guy. Stalls like this normally have to be booked weeks and weeks in advance. You know, so the event organizers can plan accordingly. You're really going to tell me that Team Rocket, who let's not forget got kicked out of the stadium already for what can only be described as an act of domestic terrorism, they can just rock up and pop up a shop without anyone raising an eyebrow? Pull the other one, mate. This is bollocks. I swear. I guess it goes to show that when you ring up lots of sales a victory bell might take its toll. Might just be the most laboured metaphor I have ever heard the English dub team ham-fistedly cram into one of their scripts. It sounds fucking awful, mate. Who thought that sounded cool? Because it don't. It turns out Meowth is making fake Pokemon League badges out of bottle caps. But the question is, where did he get all those bottle caps? Jesse and James thought they'd sold out of the fake badges, yet here's Meowth with a massive entire box filled with bottle caps ready to make into more. How did he get his paws on so many? Oh god, they've got to be from James's collection, haven't they? Oh, and the poor bastard doesn't even realise. Did you realise that hitting the like button on this video makes this video perform better in the algorithm? It helps the channel thrive and grow and encourages more people to come to the channel and watch the rest of the videos as well? Now, last time we set the like goal at 3,000 and you lot smashed it in a bloody day. So let's go for double that. Let's go for 6,000 on this video. If we can hit that, that'd be beautiful. Don't forget, sharing the video on social media really, really helps as well, as does leaving a lovely comment comment down below and if you can't think what to comment just post something generic like oh suffocate me daddy muck oh wow i mean it's your comment if that's what you want to put sure go for it and of course if you're new don't forget to subscribe so you never miss an episode of pokemon wcf moments i really appreciate you just giving my video a chance thank you very much oh and turn on all notifications as well because i may have forgotten to mention that Meanwhile, on the grass field, we get this direct quote from Misty. I was kind of hoping Ash would let us coach him from the sidelines like we did before. But Misty, you were a rubbish coach. Literally, all you did was remind Ash to use Thunderbolt, which he probably would have done eventually anyway since he was using Pikachu. Not to mention, the battle before that, you were constantly telling Ash not to use Krabby. And look how not listening to you turned out. Misty and Brock, and Ash as we're about to find out, agree that Bulbasaur is the best choice to use on the grass field because it's a grass type. Yeah, of course. Not like Ash has got a flying type sitting in the back that would be an absolute killer if the other trainer also decides that a grass type would be a great choice on this field. Mate, 
justice for Pidgeotto. We see Ash's opponent make a grand entrance, walking down a red carpet with someone alongside her, throwing blossoms over her and all that jazzy stuff. And it's got me wondering, do you think this is just a fourth round and onwards kind of thing? Or do you think she does this for every single match she has? I think this bird thinks she's in WWE or something, needing an elaborate entrance with music and all that. Just get on the bloody field, love. We ain't got all day. Then again, maybe entrances like this are the norm and Ash is actually the knobhead for not having one planned. What do you reckon? Let me know down below. According to the announcer, Ash's opponent is Jeanette Fisher from Crimson City. Crimson City? Where the bloody hell's that? I guess anything's better than the Japanese name for a town, which roughly translates to Little Girl Town. Yikes. Much like Gary Gary, Jeanette's got her own cheering squad, complete with cheerleaders, drums, people holding signs and all that. But what's this guy doing? He's just randomly throwing punches and going, huh, huh. Huh. Like as if that's gonna will Jeanette onto victory. Is this maybe like a Japanese thing? Do other countries have people do this, like in America? When you guys play your version of football, do you have random martial artists on the sidelines going, huh, huh, huh? Answers on a postcard. I have no idea what this bloke's all about. Brock goes full simp mode for Jeanette and just straight up says that she should win against Ash. Mate, you've known she exists for all of 20 seconds and you already wanted to crush your friend's dreams. Brock is a terrible friend. Pass it on. After Ash sends out Bulbasaur, Jeanette sends out a Beedrill. And Misty then says to Brock that Jeanette doesn't look so tough. Mate, she's got a Beedrill? Have you seen how OP Beedrill's been shown to be in the anime so far? That thing's a killer. Jeanette tells her Beedrill to use Tackle Attack, and unfortunately for her, it misses. I guess that Beedrill's just not used to using Tackle Attack, since it can't bloody learn it. Ash gets Bulbasaur, who can learn Tackle, to use Razor Leaf. Yes, Razor Leaf. A grass-type move, which means the bug and poison type Beedrill four times resists it. Ash mate, you're a dunce. Get in the bin. As Beedrill goes in for its signature twin needle, which is a great choice of move by the way since it's four times effective on Bulbasaur because for some reason bug type was strong against poison type in generation one, don't know why, the Beedrill completely dodges all of Bulbasaur's razor leaf. Mate, that move razor leaf has a 5% chance of missing. Ash has to be one of the unluckiest trainers in the entire world right now. So Beedrill tries multiple times to use twin needle but misses every single time. And Jeanette says, good, now use poison sting. Firstly, what was good about Beedrill's offense just now? It didn't land a single hit. And secondly, why would you switch from a four times effective move to a neutral damage move with lower base power? Misty was right all along. She's not that tough. She's apparently crap at battling. Direct quote from Misty. I just hope Jeanette doesn't have any more Pokemon like that Beedrill. What are you talking about, mate? The Beedrill's clearly shite. Let's hope she does have more Pokemon like it. Ash might get another 3-0 and at this rate. Brock says he just hopes Jeanette doesn't have a boyfriend. You know what? It's genuinely unnerving how quickly this boy decides that a woman is his sole focus. He's like a predator choosing a target at this point. Like, it's kind of chilling to watch back. Like, he goes full tunnel vision at these women. The character of Brock Harrison in Pokemon really does have all the makings of a sexual criminal, doesn't he? Bulbasaur uses Leech Seed, but remember, it's the anime version of Leech Seed that saps all of the opponent's HP in one go and completely prevents them from moving at all. May Leech Seed in the anime is too OP isn't it? Leech Seed Bulbasaur? New meta? After Bulbasaur tackles Beedrill out of the competition, Jeanette sends out her second Pokemon, Scyther, who proceeds to try and slash the ever-loving almighty hell out of Bulbasaur. I guess it's lucky for Bulbasaur then that this thing couldn't hit grass if it fell down. Jeanette then tells Scyther to use Quick Attack, even though Scyther clearly uses a move that doesn't make contact and therefore couldn't possibly be Quick Attack. We know, in the Japanese version, she asked it to use Swift. We know. Let me remind you, we're covering the English dub of the Pokemon anime, so dubbing errors are definitely WTF moments. Especially in cases like this, where the Pokemon is clearly using a completely different move to the one that was requested. And I'm just saying, if this was Quick Attack, we'd know it because this Scyther would have missed every single attempt. That's why we know it's Swift, because it actually lands. Another TM move, that. Just saying. Mate, when Bulbasaur tried to use Vine Whip and Scyther was just batting the vines away with its giant scythe-like arms, was anyone else really worried that Bulbasaur's vines were just gonna get like chopped off? I mean, I'm sure he could probably grow more, but God, it makes me uneasy. Direct quote from Jeanette. You'll lose twice as fast against Scyther's double team. Nah, come on. I don't think that's strictly true, love. You can't guarantee that Ash will lose twice as fast, but what you can guarantee is that Bulbasaur will probably miss twice as many moves. This episode's Who's That Pokemon Pokemon is Bellsprout. Mate, I really hope that hasn't spoiled a big reveal for later on in the episode. 
For God's sake, stop showing this bloody shot of Jeanette's twatty cheering squad. I swear we've seen it like three or four times at this point. I know you need to pad your episodes out a little bit, Pokemon, but Jesus Christ, just animate something else. This next scene does my head in as well. Currently, there are three Scythers on the battlefield. There's the original one, and then there are two illusions from the double team. So Ash gets Bulbasaur to attack each of them one at a time to find out which is the real one. But Bulbasaur just does it really slowly and cautiously. And then when there is only one left on the battlefield, which obviously can only be the original one, Bulbasaur just stands there, jaw agape, and doesn't even dodge Scyther's attack. Apparently, Bulbasaur's a numpty. Pass it on. After Bulbasaur takes an absolute twat in over and over again, Ash finally comes up with an idea. Hey, wait! Use your Vine Whip against all three! Mate, that's exactly what he was doing. He was just doing it at three miles an hour for some reason. You just need to tell him to pick up the pace. Bulbasaur finally lands Vine Whip on the real Scyther and sends it crashing down. And oh look, turns out it can hit grass. Direct quote from Brock. Ash figured out that Scyther's double team attack left it twice as weak on defense. Brock, mate, that's not how double team team works. Double team raises your evasiveness, making you less likely to be hit. It doesn't have any effect on defenses. And in theory, if you're less likely to be hit, that means that you potentially will take less damage. So if anything, it's made Scyther stronger defensively. Brock, stop talking out your ass, mate. For some unexplained reason, Team Rocket have now ditched their little stall and are now outside the stadium with their hot air balloon acting as a distraction with these giant Pikachu models on them and using a giant vacuum to try and suck up all the other trainers' Pokemon. I I mean, how does that vacuum even work? I'll be honest, I never fully understand when Team Rocket do dish out some kind of Pokemon vacuum. Won't it just get full up of like dust and leaves and crap like that as well as the occasional Pokeball? Since surely you can't create a vacuum that selectively only sucks in Pokeballs or Pokemon themselves, right? Then again, this is a world where animals can be caught in small spherical containers that somehow recognize that the leak that a Farfetch carries is somehow part of the Pokemon. So I guess anything's possible, really. Just like it's possible to save 30% on G Fuel right now with code ACE. That's right, G Fuel is 30% off from now until midnight, Monday night, the 12th of July. That's when it will go back down to 10%. So get your orders in to save a big bag of money this weekend on a beautiful a range of flavors from the lovely G Fuel. Today I'm drinking the lovely, the tropical, the summery Bahama Mama. It's pineapple and coconutty and lovely. If you like coconut, this is a flavor for you. It's absolutely bloody wonderful. It's a tropical masterpiece. Oh, it is an absolutely perfect summertime drink and it's bloody boiling in here, so I'm very, very happy to have such a lovely, refreshing beverage. So yes, use code ACE this weekend to get 30% off G Fuel rather than the normal 10%. And of course, remember, it's for over 18s only because children don't need caffeine, they're bloody annoying as it is. And because it contains caffeine, just please drink it responsibly. Don't be a dickhead, dickhead. Direct quote from Officer Jenny to Officer Jenny. Look! That's Team Rocket's balloon! I mean, this brings up a really valid point. After using their Meowth balloon for so long, to the point where people literally recognize it as Team Rocket's balloon, you'd think they'd try and find a more discreet mode of transport, wouldn't you? Like at this point, even another hot air balloon, but with the design of a different Pokemon would be better. Oh, imagine a wheezing balloon, that'd be class. Another direct quote from Officer Jenny. Arcanine, flamethrower! Excuse me, madam, but that good boy is a Growlithe. But fair play to Growlithe, doing his best impression of Arcanine's cry that definitely wasn't a dubbing error just so that Jenny didn't feel stupid. But I mean, she is though. I know the crowd are all really excited at the prospect of getting one of these giant Pikachu models absolutely free, but did you see how fast those things fell to the ground after Growlithe destroyed the balloon? These things definitely have some considerable weight to them. I'm hoping no one was underneath them because they'd be dead. Cool, that'd sour the mood, wouldn't it? Hey, free Pikachu! Oh my god, there's a dead person under it. Mate, why are these Officer Jennies so crap? They're stood next to the main body of Team Rocket's vacuum talking about giving it a ticket. But if they'd just turned their heads 90 degrees, they'd see known and recognizable criminals Team Rocket stood 10 feet away from them. It's no wonder there's so much crime in the Pokemon world if this is the police force they have. As Team Rocket sprint away from the two Jennies, you've just really got to stop and appreciate this guy. Having the fucking time of his life, that kid. Poor Meowth takes two kicks to the bollocks as both Jesse and James trip over him. Oh, mate, that is rough. I'd rather have a second vasectomy than take two consecutive kicks to the plums. And for anyone going, really? 
It's not so bad. It's really not that bad. Get snipped. The kid in this picture, and the parent for that matter, see Team Rocket change into their disguises and start pretending to be vendors, and they say nothing. Oi dickheads, report the criminals! You just saw them being chased by police! If you're the kind of person who doesn't report a crime when you see it, you might as well be involved yourself. Grow a bloody spine, mate. Back on the grass field, Jeanette sends out her final Pokemon. Bellsprout. Mate, we've seen a completely unrelated Victory Bell and Bellsprout in the same episode. That's kind of cool. No Weeping Bell though. That's kind of sad. Justice for Weeping Bell. For saying this is my favourite episode of Pokemon, I didn't realise until today just how many times they used this goddamn clip. Huh! 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 It's driving me fucking bonkers! Bellsprout proceeds to absolutely decimate Ash's Bulbasaur without taking a single shot itself. If that's not a WTF moment, I don't know what is. Bellsprout is a badass! Who knew? Obviously, everyone that's watched this episode since it first aired in 1998, they knew. But other than that, who knew? Just stop! Listen, Bellsprout dodging Pikachu's Thundershock is absolutely a WTF moment, and I'll tell you why. This move has been seen in the anime hitting multiple opponents at once, but he can't hit a single Bellsprout with it? That's insane! Also, why is Ash using an Electric-type move on a Grass-type Pokémon? That's not going to be very effective. Quick Attack would be a much better choice. Then again, we know why. It's because he's Ash Ketchum, and he's a Bell end. Apparently, Bellsprout's legs act like mini lightning rods, meaning that it's completely immune to Pikachu's electric type attacks. Stop this! This is absolute bollocks, mate. I hate when the anime makes some garbage like this. Would it really be that devastating to have Thunderbolt bother Bellsprout a little bit, but not enough to do any significant damage? And then you could have Jeanette be like, You should know, electric type moves aren't very effective against grass type Pokemon. If you don't even know that, there's no way you're good enough to beat me. See? I could write this show. I reckon. After discovering his electric type attacks are completely useless, Pikachu decides to try and box with Bellsprout. When have you ever used a successful punching move? You know Quick Attack, mate. Why not give that a go? Professor Oak and Ash's mum turn up because they came to cheer Ash on and they apologise for arriving late. Let's face it, we all know what's going on here. They're late because they were back at their hotel doing very naughty things. I mean, I guess they don't call him Professor Oak for nothing. The man's clearly packing wood. Oh! My heart! After Pikachu got knocked out by Bellsprout, Ash ran over and carried it to the side of the battlefield. But then instead of having his best pal by his side up on the green platform for the rest of the battle, he just left Pikachu on the floor at the side of the platform like he's worthless. Poor Pikachu looks so bloody sorry for himself. Jesus, one lost round and Pikachu's already been tossed aside? Pokemon League's really going to Ash's head, isn't it? Whoa, the big reveal! Ash's third Pokemon is Muck. I remember losing my absolute mind when I saw this for the first time. They did such an amazing job of giving zero hints. Like, I don't think Muck's been seen or mentioned since the Pokemopolis episode. Well done, Pokemon. Well done. Oak explains that Ash thought he might need Muck, and so he sent Muck over, etc, etc, but he talks for so long that his eyebrows go grey. Oak, mate, you're an old man. You're not long for this world, so brevity is your friend. Direct quote from Jeanette. Alright, Bellsprout, flying Muck kick! That's not a Clearly, Jeanette and Bellsprout have never played Final Fantasy. Physical attacks won't hurt creatures made of goo, mate. You've got to hit them with magic attacks. Wait, what do you mean wrong franchise? Bellsprout uses Razor Leaf to give Muck a makeshift bra, which Muck promptly shakes off. Muck is in favour of the free the nipple movement. Confirmed. Muck then uses Body Slam and effectively suffocates Bellsprout into submission. I mean, yay, Ash wins, but also crikey, that's a bit dark. It's fine, it's a kid show, so nobody died, so it's all good. But still, what if he died? Died. Jesse and James daydream about opening a fast food restaurant. Jesse wants to call it Jesse, and James suggests James. Mate, you had bloody Rocket Burger right there and you didn't go for it. In their defence, their revised motto to include fast food references is pretty okay, but that doesn't excuse not thinking of Rocket Burger. Very disappointed. Well, actually Liam, did you know there really is a place called Rocket Burger that's in Phoenix, Arizona? Yes, because believe it or not, I too have access to Google. Misty says Ash didn't do too bad in his match, but... If it wasn't for Muck, you'd be out of luck. Yes, Misty. That's why Ash himself made the conscious decision beforehand to have Muck transferred over. I know you don't want to believe it, but he actually planned ahead and it paid off, so give him credit for this one. Muck grabs Misty by around the torso and repeatedly thrusts himself at her while she screams for him to stop. <sighs> Muck is a pervert. 
pass it on. Now credit where credit is due, Ash won his fourth round match and qualified for the Pokemon League's top 32. But that reveals a terrible truth. Ash Ketchum is, on paper, a more accomplished trainer now than Gary Gary. Oh god. I need to lie down. So those are my WTF moments for Pokemon Season 1, Episode 77, the fourth round rumble. Let me know your favourites and any that I missed down in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Head over to twitch.tv forward slash Ace for all of my live streams and use code Ace for 30% off G Fuel this weekend. But until next time, I'm Ace Trainer Liam. Keep on training.